So thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Natasha Salgado. Uh, my pronouns are she, hers, ella. I am a community organizer um, with Logan Heights Community Development Corporation and a member of the People's Economy Working Group. Uh, we are bringing tonight's panel to you um, with the purpose to uplift our coalition's uh, people's economies demands. We are a working group, part of the Community Budget Alliance Coalition. Uh, we are composed of um, 25 local organizations um, guided by the shared mission that our community des deserves a people's budget, um, one that centers equitable public investment. Um, and then if we can move on to the next slide. Um, the organizations part of the People's Economy Working Group are um, AFSCME 127, Center on Policy Initiatives, um, City Heights Community Development Corporation, Interfaith Workers Justice, Logan Heights Community Development Corporation, um, Muslim American Society Public Affairs and Civic Engage Engagement, Mass Pace, San Diego Building and Construction Trades Council, and United Domestic Workers of America. A people's economy means community needs are prioritized over corporate interests and that an economic recovery includes ensuring workers are treated with respect and dignity, um, that the most impacted are centered in the economic recovery and that BIPOC small businesses are supported and invested in equitably. For tonight's event, we will go over two of our demands. Number one, the need for the city of San Diego to uphold a strong job quality standards through the creation of an Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement. And two, the need for the city to provide direct cash aid to immigrants who have been excluded from a majority of all relief efforts. Um, starting us off um, in our conversation today is Reverend Sherry. Thank you, Natasha. Um, hello, I am Reverend Sherry Matir. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am executive director and co-founder of Interfaith Worker Justice of San Diego County, otherwise known as IWJSD. Um, I'm, I just want to kind of get us started and get our, our brains focused on what we're talking about tonight. So we have a little bit of interaction here. So um, we will go ahead and hopefully I know, um, get us started on our first poll. Uh, those of us um, on Zoom will be able to interact and see that po poll. Um, so just a little bit about workers' rights to begin with. So our first set of questions, um, you'll be answering just two on this first sec section. And it's asking about the minimum wage in the city of San Diego and which workers in San Diego City are guaranteed sick leave. And so soon you should be, that poll should be up and we ask you just to go ahead and answer those, then you'll come right back with us.
Okay, great. Thank you for answering those first two questions. Um, so the minimum wage in the city of San Diego, drum roll please, right now is actually $14 an hour. So 29% of you knew that. Um, we Next year we will be getting at $15 an hour. Um, and so, but that was something a lot of you, you know, there were a lot that thought that that was lower than that. So um, it is important to know that the minimum wage, if you were working in the city of San Diego, you should be making no less than $14 an hour. Now, which workers in San, San Diego are guaranteed sick leave? And all workers, most of you got that correct, which is true. All workers are guaranteed sick leave, no less than one hour of paid sick leave for every 30 hours work. So thank you so much. We do have a, another set of questions that um, we, we would want you to answer. We've just got a, um, a little bit of time. And so um, this here, we're going to be answering just real quickly, uh, all workers are eligible for unemployment benefits. And so which of those are, and then which of the following is wage theft? So there's um, one true false and one um, multiple choice. So go ahead and answer those. Okay, it looks like our poll has closed now. And um, most of you indicated that um, it all that all workers are eligible for unemployment benefits um, said false. Uh, well, hopefully you'll have the answer by the end of this presentation. And which of these is wage theft? Um, all the above, almost everyone got that one right. So good job. We just have one more question for you. So the last is just one question is, have you or someone you know experienced wage theft or been denied, been denied paid sick leave? So if you personally or you know someone has done that, please answer the next question. Okay, so it looks like everyone's been able to, so 43% have um, experienced or know of someone who has experienced wage theft. And we'll be talking about, about that a little bit more. And then 36%, wonderful, say, you know, no, neither one, denied paid sick leave or wage theft, but there are still several there. So I thank you for participating in this and for being here tonight. And now we go back to Ana Laura.
Thank you, Sherry. Hi, everyone. My name is Ana Laura. I use she, her, ella pronouns. I am an organizer with the Center on Policy Initiatives. Before we go into taking, talking about the two demands we will highlight tonight, we want to set a context for this moment. Uh, we are a full year into the pandemic, and as we have heard before, COVID-19 has exacerbated structural inequalities. Capitalism and white supremacy are fundamental pillars that have shaped and continue to shape the inequities we see. These are the guiding frameworks that justify inequality and the accumulation of wealth for a few through the expectation of people's labor who are predominantly black, indigenous, and people of color. Through policymaking, because of these systems, BIPOC have been intentionally excluded, worsening their lived experiences. This has been a product of the guiding pillars that render BIPOC as exploitable, disposable, and likely to, to overwhelmingly work in high risk, low wage jobs. So the exploitation and disposability of BIPOC workers is seen time and time again throughout history and still to today. BIPOC workers are more likely than white workers to have jobs that place them at greater risk of exposure to and transmissions of COVID-19. These are jobs that have been deemed as essential and they are also low wage jobs. Compounding the dangers of this, workers in these low wage jobs also disproportionately have less access to adequate medical and financial support. Lastly, BIPOC workers have and continue to face disproportionate death rates compared to whites. So we share this context and name these inequities as a way to re-remind us of the urgency for a just and equitable budget that intentionally centers those impacted. Our communities cannot afford the status quo. So just a little bit of context and thank you so much for joining us. I would like to pass it over to Isma Hen who will lead us in discussing the demand for the city of San Diego to provide direct cash aid to immigrants. Thank you so much, uh, Ana Laura. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Salam, peace be upon all of you. This pandemic has exasperated the very inequities that we knew existed in our region and throughout our country, specifically for our immigrant families. Immigrants, as we know, are integral to our communities. Non-citizen workers have been among the hardest hit by the pandemic, facing high job losses and at the same time putting their lives on the line in the frontline industries. Research from UC Merced shows that nearly one in four pandemic job losses in California hit non-citizen immigrants as immigrant workers are the backbone of the most impacted industries. These workers who are essential and have been essential even before the COVID-19 pandemic remain to be one of the most vulnerable populations that are not receiving adequate aid. So we need a direct cash aid program for the excluded workers who have not been eligible for state or federal benefits, including unemployment insurance. We cannot fail these families and their loved ones. Immigrants make up the invisible backbone of many of the hardest hit industries uh, during the pandemic, like food service, personal care, and hospitality. The jobs that they do cannot be done remotely. They simply cannot be done remotely. And the workers who would apply for this assistance do some of the most important work in our communities often not recognized, such as preparing our food, maintaining our homes, taking care of our loved ones, and so on. Many of the families that we've talked to have struggled uh, with little to no income since March and there's been no safety net at all. Even before this pandemic, many of these families have been living paycheck to paycheck. And while this program would offer far less than what other workers are currently eligible for through unemployment insurance and the pandemic unemployment assistance, the direct cash aid program would help provide at least a base level of support towards ensuring that undocumented and mixed status families can survive this pandemic. Uh, and really just thinking about the impact that it has on our immigrant uh, families. I'm sure many of us can think of workers and loved ones who, who have been impacted greatly, who have not been able to receive uh, the aid uh, that, they, that they deserve, the aid that they need for their families um, during this difficult, difficult time. And I wanna check in to see if my dear brother Christian is on um, to kind of just share with us some of those stories. And if not, we can move on um, to my sister, Carol. Oh, 
All right. All right, well, maybe we'll come back for Christian to uplifting our undocumented immigrants in the US workforce who need direct cash aid. But right now um, in this crucial short term um, moment that we're in right now, we need this crucial short term direct cash aid to provide income to support immigrant workers who have lost jobs to the pandemic. So without any further ado, Carol, I'm gonna pass it to you and she will speak on the need for the city of San Diego to uphold strong job quality standards through the creation of an Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carol and I'm from the San Diego Building Trades Council and I'm glad to be able to join my sisters and brothers from the Community Budget Alliance here tonight. The city of San Diego has some good laws around wage standards and workplace safety for workers already in place. We were one of the first large cities in California to raise our minimum wage for all workers, even before the state did. We also have a prevailing wage law for city public works projects and an equal pay law that guarantees equal pay for women on city work. The sad reality is that there are plenty of unethical employers who engage in wage theft, which is stealing wages from workers by not complying with the city's laws. And these laws are only as good as the city's willingness to enforce them. While the city has these good laws, its programs to oversee the laws and enforce them are scattered haphazardly in different departments and are underfunded and understaffed. This means that unscrupulous employers are able to take advantage of workers who can't easily find help or support from the city to make sure they're getting their rightfully due wages and or safe working conditions. We're asking that the city of San Diego align its existing programs for wages and workplace safety into one office so there can be better coordination and fast track the hiring necessary to fully staff all budgeted positions for these programs. San Diego needs an Office of Labor Standards Enforcement. I want to introduce Blanca, a community member who filed a case with the city of San Diego in 2017, who has yet to have her case resolved. Blanca, are you here? I don't see Blanca. So I think we're gonna be coming back to her very shortly um, while we are waiting for her to get on. A lot of our uh, people who are providing testimony are of course working. So we're waiting for them to be able to join us as they are you know, coming back and forth between their jobs and the opportunity to speak here. She's actually, oh, she's actually here uh, available but she's having trouble getting online technical difficulties. So we appreciate everybody's patience. Um, I just wanna note that wage theft is really widespread and this is why we are calling on the city to consolidate the existing departments into an office of labor standards and enforcement. It's really problematic that so many employers are not actually complying with our minimum wage um, standards, our laws around prevailing wage and our laws around equal pay. And additionally, we also have those laws around sick days and um, paid leave, which again, need to be enforced and often are not. I am going to actually, while we're waiting for Blanca to get on, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Sherry, Reverend Sherry, to go through our call to action and then we'll circle back to the speakers. Reverend Sherry, are you there? I am. Thank you, Carol. Um, yes, there. I, I want you. You know, hopefully, everyone's getting an idea of how important these are. Just two of the ask of the Community Budget Alliance, um, and all the groups working. Again, some of our speakers that will tell you their stories and why. And they, of course, their stories just amplify how many people this affects. There are some things that I will go over right now with you that I hope that you can will do. Um, and as we have some time now, um, there is some time right now, go ahead and click on the link in the chat and that will take you to a document, a pre-written letter that will go to our mayor, Mayor Todd Gloria and let him know um, that you, you want him to consider and to, to, give, to let the uh, priorities, the Community Budget Alliance, that they reflect what you want out of him, um, especially those um, 
you know, say, you know, I am your voter, I'm your constituent, those of you who live within the city of San Diego, um, you want to, this is, will go directly to Mayor Gloria about the Community Budget Alliance priorities. And tonight we're highlighting um, the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, and all, otherwise known as OLSE, and also um, direct cash aid for those that are missed in all the other cash aid that's been going out during our time of pandemic, especially. So click on the link, email to Mayor, Mayor Gloria directly. Um, we also ask that as you are doing this, that you say that and you, you share what you have learned today with your networks. So your household members, your family, the people you work with, your faith um, groups, any your networks that you have, share and reshare our social media graphic. And um, on Facebook and Twitter, all you have to do is click on the links in the action page to go from the um, to the Facebook, to CBA's Facebook post and simply hit reshare. You can do the same with the CBA Community Budget Lines tweet and hit retweet. Um, let's see, I'm getting a little bit here. Um, the city is actually, uh, is in it is an invitation to bid process for the new utility franchises and the, um, the new bid documents do not include requirements for the city wage laws to apply to contractors, which means our San Diego uh, living wage. And so this compliance, um, you know, this lack of compliance hurts our workers and it hurts our city. With, um, San Diego families, you know, pay the highest utility bills in California and nationwide. Um, Okay, and so we will get back to some of the actions here. I see that um, our, one of our speakers on um, direct cash aid, Christian Ramirez is here. Um, so I think we're going to Christian. Is that right, folks? Thank you, Sherry. Yes, we would love to welcome Christian, who's joining us after a very long day, um, just to really ground us in what we're talking about in terms of uh, direct cash aid uh, to, to our immigrant workers who have been on the front line and also have been the backbone of our economy. Uh, Christian, please feel free. Well, thank you so much, sister. Uh, I really want to appreciate all of you for your tremendous leadership here in San Diego uh, and for including this such an important issue like uh, ensuring that our immigrant brothers and sisters are fully uh, supported by any initiatives uh, around the uh, relief uh, in this time of crisis. And as folks know, we were in a, uh, immigrant communities have been completely devastated by, by the pandemic, um, not only uh, because of uh, the fact that many immigrants are uh, frontline workers, but many immigrants uh, also work in the informal economy and, and further sometimes in the underground economy. And, um, and this has just exacerbated um, the conditions that immigrant families have been facing even before the pandemic. Um, and one of the things that we have been uplifting constantly, and we did this even in the midst of, you know, uh, I'm not gonna even mention the previous administration, full name, but uh, in the previous administration, you know, a lot of uh, immigrant families were excluded from any sort of a uh, relief. Uh, these, this included mixed status families. What that means is our families who may have undocumented folks, legal permanent residents, and even US citizens in that same household. Um, and many of those folks were excluded from the CARES Act. Uh, and as a result of that, we worked diligently to ensure that uh, the governor of California uh, and the legislature in the state passed uh, uh, policy, passed bills, passed laws that ensured that uh, we filled in the gap. And that wasn't enough. The process was very uh, complicated. Um, it was basically left to our sister organizations in the immigrant rights movement to be able to provide um, much needed uh, economic relief to um, our immigrant sisters and brothers, um, and that relief wasn't enough. Um, luckily, this time around, we have been able to pass additional measures at the state level that will include things like the child tax credit for undocumented families. 
Uh, and although uh, we were very thrilled to see that um, the, the, the parents of US born children who may not be in this country with lawful status uh, are now going to be able to get um, federal relief uh, still, uh, even with a, a Biden administration and with the Democratic Party in control of both, con of both houses and both chambers in Congress have not been able to pass legislation that include um, ensuring that all workers, regardless of their immigration status, who have been essential to ensuring that this economy move, keeps moving forward, uh, um, are, are, are still excluded. Uh, so we still need to do much more here at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level. And now with um, uh, the new stimulus that was just approved by Congress and signed by President Biden, um, we still have to ensure that our county and our cities um, are in our state are, and are earmarking some of these resources to ensure that every single worker in this state, every single worker in our region uh, has access to life-saving um, um, resources that, uh, uh, that are urgently needed now more than ever. Um, and, and this is particularly true because if we are indeed going to uh, have a, a new era post-pandemic, we have to ensure that immigrant workers are, um, are fully folded into any policy solution that addresses the current crisis that we are facing. Um, and particularly here in San Diego as a border region uh, with a lot of trans-border workers coming back and forth uh, through our region, uh, it is important now to uh, begin to have these conversations about policy shift that does not continue to, ex a policy paradigm that doesn't continue to exclude um, immigrant workers. Um, and right now, that conversation is pivotal because we are in the midst of a big, big, big and overdue debate in Congress about immigration reform. And for the first time, uh, since I've been working on immigration issues, uh, we are seeing members of Congress begin to say that yes, immigrant workers are essential. They were essential a year ago when this pandemic began. They have been essential throughout the duration of the last 12 months of the pandemic. And they are essential now uh, when we are passing legislation that addresses the plight of working families. So uh, I, I completely uh, applaud the efforts that are happening here tonight um, because we're putting this issue front and center. Um, and San Diego, uh, we know, is a welcoming place. Uh, we, uh, um, you know, we are seeing the leadership of the county and the city and dealing with um, this terrible tragedy of unaccompanied children uh, who are being forced out of their home countries by economic conditions in those places and, and forced through a very perilous journey to arrive in our region. Uh, we're doing the right thing, but we need to do more. And that more is ensuring that every single working family without regards to their immigration status has an opportunity to thrive in this city, to thrive in the state and to thrive in this country and ensuring that everyone has uh, access to these uh, resources is critical. Uh, so as we move forward and as we are having conversations about the federal stimulus and how it's going to be utilized by our local elected leadership, um, our efforts, our joint efforts uh, to advocate on behalf of workers and to create the spaces so that immigrant workers are the ones who are leading this fight uh, is much more critical now than ever before. So I, the, the, the only thing that I would say um, is that as we are looking into the reopening of our economy, and I just wanna underscore this point uh, is and we have to ensure that not only are, that we are advocating for our immigrant brothers and sisters, but that we are also creating opportunities for our uh, community members to get vaccinated. Um, we're still very much behind with regards to access to the vaccines. Uh, and I, every time I have an opportunity to, to, um, you know, to speak to folks, I wanna underscore this point that uh, 
there is still a very serious problem in our country uh, in, in the way that we're ha where folks have access to healthcare and access to the vaccine just really uh, puts a big magnify magnifying glass on the issues of equity in our, in our society. Uh, immigrant workers, like black workers, like other, uh, like API workers, like other workers of color continue to be underrepresented in the access to vaccines uh, and continue to lead uh, the charts and fatalities and in infections. And we have a moral obligation to ensure that every single worker who has been risking their lives and the lives of their families to allow this economy to move forward has access to the vaccine. And that's still not happening uh, in the way that it should. Uh, so I'll pause there uh, and, and, and appreciate the work that, uh, that all of you are doing on behalf of all of us who have been fighting for so long to ensure that every single immigrant and refugee uh, in, our, in our society uh, is fully integrated into, uh, into our society. And uh, this is what it's all about. Uh, and if we don't do it now, when it's most critical, it's not gonna happen uh, once uh, the economy fully reopens. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christian. I appreciate you always grounding us um, and really just bringing the conversation back to uh, the narrative on the ground, for, especially for those who've been on the grounds working and how important and critical it is for us to demand a direct cash aid. Um, Sherry did share with us the uh, call to action, which we'll revisit, but right now I wanna hand it over to Carol to introduce, to introduce uh, Blanca. Thank you so much, Ismahan. Thank you again, Christian, for those remarks and comments to help really provide, um, to put the face and the, uh, the wrap the humanity into the scope of the kind of challenges we're trying to face here and address with these asks for the people's budget. I wanna now, um, it's my honor now to do this, um, introduce to you Blanca Macias, who is a worker who recently, or well, she'll tell you more but um, about the detail, but who has um, really stepped forward. She actually filed a grievance herself against an employer who was um, engaging in wage theft and um, has been fighting that fight through the city and its current sources. And so um, Blanca, if you will unmute and turn on your camera. Um, and I believe that we have um, Andrea Rocha, who is our interpreter, who, who will be interpreting Blanca's. Por favor, pon tu cámara, Blanca. Por favor, eh, pon tu cámara, Blanca. Te estamos esperando. Abierta. And Blanca, please tell us your story. Blanca, por favor, dinos tu historia. Cuéntanos tu historia. Bueno, mi nombre es Blanca Macías. Yo trabajé para una compañía, compañía llamada Prisma, una compañía de limpieza contratada por la ciudad. Eh, eh, tuve muy malas experiencias en esta compañía eh, no recibí los sueldos adecuados, no me pagaban overtime eh, no, no este, tenía vacaciones, no tenía derecho a enfermarme, a tener mis días de enfermedad eh, terminé lesionada en la compañía no recibí work at home eh, me afectó muchísimo en mi vida eh, personal eh, Perdí todo, perdí... Blanca, casa, permíteme perdí un todo. minuto mientras hago la interpretación. My name is Blanca Macias and I, uh, I have been a worker with a cleaning company uh, that was a, a, a city contract by the name of uh, Prisma. I had a very bad experience there. I was not receiving an adequate salary. I was not getting overtime. I had no vacation. I was uh, not getting sick leave. And I was hurt with no workers comp to back me up. Continue, Blanca, por favor. Sí, este, no me pagaban horas extras. Utilizaban el seguro social de mi esposo para poder cubrir las horas que yo trabajaba de más. Tenía demasiado trabajo. Prácticamente me obligaban a hacerlo porque si yo decía algo, me decían que era todo o nada. Este, me lesioné, como les digo, no, no obtuve de work is home, no, no pude recibir ayuda de ellos, me corrieron, me despidieron a causa de esta lesión, lo cual me impactó bastante mi vida, perdí mi casa, perdí mi carro, perdí, o sea, todo lo material que yo tenía. Permítame eh, un, 
un momento aquí. I would not have any extra time. I, uh, I had too much work and it was an all or nothing proposition. I was hurt on the job and I had no workers comp. I was fired and I lost everything. I lost my house and I lost my car. Sí, adelante. Sí, a causa de esto, este, yo estoy deshabilitada. Este, pedí ayuda al Seguro Social. Eh, quedé deshabilitada a causa de estas lesiones. Eh, eh, estoy este, desilusionada por, por parte de la ciudad porque ya son cuatro años que es, quedaron de ayudarme y no se ha resuelto nada. Entonces, pues yo le pido al alcalde, eh, eh, Todd Gloria, que, que por favor proteja a sus trabajadores, que no. es demasiado tiempo ya, son cuatro años y no he recibido, o sea, ni, ninguna respuesta favorable para mí. I am now on disability. I filed for uh, social security. I cannot work because of my injury. I'm very disillusioned with the city of San Diego. I have gotten no help. It has been four years now. And uh, major, I, I would tell the mayor, Todd Gloria, that enough is enough. It's been four years and I am uh, still suffering from these injuries and this disability. Adelante. Sí, este, bueno, eh, pues yo quisiera, me entiende, este, que, que alguien me escuche, que alguien haga justicia, que me ayuden, por favor. Eh, mi vida ha cambiado demasiado, o sea, eh, he tenido muchos cambios, he pasado por muchas depresiones, he estado bastante afectada a causa de, 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 este, de este daño que yo obtuve en esta compañía. Y bueno, pues solo pido que hagan justicia, por favor, que me ayuden en, en, en mi caso. Gracias. I, I want to be heard. I want justice. I want people to listen to my case. There's been too many changes in my life. I now suffer from depression and I just want justice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bianca, for that um, really powerful, or Blanca, for that really powerful testimony. We so appreciate your taking the time to be with us tonight. Um, as you can see, these particular types of crimes actually impact act individual people across our communities um, in very real ways. And we are hopeful that the mayor and others will hear you and um, your story. You are not alone in having these particular types of things happen to you. Um, I, in, from my perspective at the San Diego Building Trades Council, I can tell you that this happens to construction workers, especially in the non-union side all the time. So again, Thank you so much, Blanca, for your support and your um, testimony tonight. It's very powerful. Um, so if uh, as question as time allows, um, are there any questions from the audience regarding this particular topic of wage theft? not hearing any, I am going to go ahead and pass it back to Reverend Sherry. Reverend Sherry, if you might, um, again, walk us through our call to action. Uh, we can follow up and find a way to support these brave workers and so many others like them. Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. Gracias a Blanca and Cristian and Isman, all of our, our panelists and our speakers tonight. Um, we, we do thank you because I hope that each and every one of us heard the, the desire and the need and the urgency um, on why direct cash aid and um, an Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, why these should be budget priorities for our city, because they support our residents, our workers. 
And so because I know that everyone here is are, are people of, of conscience and of good faith, because you are here tonight, I urge you now to um, take, take on by um, writing to Mayor Todd Gloria. Again, the link will be in the chat in just a moment. Um, if you haven't already, you can click on that and you can send that forward. You can um, personalize it, if you will, or send it as is. You can also um, make sure that you share on um, or reshare on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you, you know, go ahead and follow um, community, you know, community Budget Alliance and retweet um, our the the tweets and the graphics if you want to share the cba demands on instagram uh, all you have to do there's three little steps some of you are probably pros at this but you download the graphic by clicking on it you grab the suggested script and you post on your instagram um, so th these are the actions we ask you to take right now and again share these with your networks with those you know are impacted by this because the mayor works for us, the, the residents of the city of San Diego. And so we need to tell him, um, you know, this is what we expect you to do. This is what the residents of San Diego uh, have find as our priorities. And so we need you to do this. Um, so follow us on Instagram and on Facebook um, and on Twitter, you know, um, for updates on other ways you can take action. There, this is just one of the series of panelists on the for the Community Budget Alliance. And the next one is from the working group of um, what on the public on redefining public safety. And that is on April 6th, which is just next week. So we urge you all to attend that and look for more. Keep in touch. Go ahead and follow us so that you know um, what um, what's happening next. Um, People's Economy will be coming back in a few weeks to talk about some of our other asks. So thank you all for joining here tonight. Um, I don't think there's um, maybe Ana Laura or Jean Louis. Um, you know, we, we can prioritize you know workers. Um, because that's who the city, do, that we are the backbone of the city. And it is important for all of us to do that. So sign up for the next panel event. Um, you can see that in your, in the chat on the Zoom. So it, the link is right there. So you can go ahead and you'll get reminders then on April 6th on what's the next part you wanna do as the working group of redefining public safety presents some of their priorities. Thank you all for joining us and together we will do this because we are always better together. Have a great rest of your night. Good night to all.